Anderstorp in Smallland. You could easily imagine the drivers losing their senses by dehydration. At least five litres of water is consumed before every race under these extreme conditions. The driver also has to dress themselves up in all kinds of protective fireproof equipment in case of emergency. The Scandinavian Raceway is very tried out and tested track, which will give both the drivers and audience a race to remember. Right then, hello and welcome back to the Swedish Touring Car Championship round 7 and 8 coming from Anderstorp. And as the world's greatest script reader just said, the heat is unbearable. So at least we don't have to worry about any wet conditions or anything like that. It is purely just dry racing, which is good. So, as always, we're going to start at the back. Uh, we have had a bit of uh, practice around this track, not on this game though, but uh, on other sims, as I mentioned last time. So, we shouldn't do too bad, hopefully, but uh, we'll see anyway. So, let's get round 7 underway. So, this is the starting grid then for round number 7. We have a Volvo lockout for row number 1 with Jens Edman and Jan Nilsson. Row number 2 is Thomas Engstrom, a great performance in the Chrysler Stratus and Carl Rosenblatt. Row number 3 is Thomas Shee and Hubert Berg with Stefan Lindberg and Matthias Ekstrom on row number 4. Row 5 is Tommy Christofferson and Jan Brunstad rounding out the top 10. Row 6 is Thomas Johansson and Tommy Rustad, Pegan Anderson and Frederick Ekblom on row 7 and on the back of the grid on row 8. Netan Lindgren in the Seoul Peugeot 406 and myself in the lovely Alfa Romeo 156 twinned with of course Thomas Shi. Uh, so yeah, let's get this race then underway. Hoping for a, another repeat performance, this time out as we had last time, with two victories. Not sure how it's going to turn out though, but we'll find out very shortly. And again, the Honda and some of the other cars just getting a little bit feisty at the front. Not too bad, as we head down the very, very long back straight. Been on this track many times during the GT Legends series, so we shouldn't have too many issues. As long as we get the car slowed down enough for these corners. Or just get rear-ended by the AI, that's absolutely fine as well. So far so good. Haven't had too many problems with the oversteer. But it's still early days. Well, we can actually take a lot more speed going around that corner, that's good to know. Oh, no, we don't. Well, this course seems to be a lot more in the flowing ways than the other ones. They're not so tight and twisty, so we can actually get some good corners in. And here as well. This corner shouldn't be too bad. It's usually on camber. Or cambered, I should say. And there we go. That is a lap of Anderstorp, and we're up into 5th, so that's not too bad. How far we're we going to make it up on the uh, grid, I have no idea. But at least everyone is in a nice little bunch up ahead. No one's really pulled away. The Chrysler Stratus just dropping back a little bit. We see where everyone starts to break. Of course, no brake lights on these cars. So you have to uh, keep an eye out when the front of the car dips down. Other than that, I'm just using them as reference points. Because I never practice on these tracks unless they're especially technical. So I just usually end up following the AI. Well, get out of the way, Mr. Stratus. Not too bad. Okay, the Volvos are still first and second. But we are catching. We're up into fourth. I'm going to squeeze on the inside of the Nissan Primera. Take third place, and ready to start yet another lap. 
11 to go. I do like the sweeping corners because the the CPU does doesn't tend to go flat out around there. We can tend to carry a lot more speed, which is good. There we go. Slowly getting used to the circuit now. At least I know where some of my braking points are. Lovely cambered corner, you can really get some good speed. Creeping up slowly on the back of the Volvos. And getting the ass end out. Gaining ever so slowly. This corner is a nice sweeper though, so we can really carry the speed. Look at this, we might actually get the lead going into the final corner. No, nope, not quite. But we're up into second, which is great. And Jens Edmund leading the way, but it looks like I could be taking the lead away shortly. And there we go. So this, if we can keep on with the lead for the rest of the race, we will increase our lead in the championship by at least 21 points. Because we're now leading the series by a single point. Oh, I did slow down a bit too much for that one. Whoops. That's alright. Not a problem. I have noticed one thing about this game as well, is that when recording, the actual race footage is absolutely fine. And yet the replay footage, now and again, you do get some uh, frame lag issues. I don't know what is causing it, but it's only ever usually in the first race replay. The second race seems to be fine. But I haven't got a foggiest idea why, for some reason, the replay seems to have some lag issues. Not unless it's because something is loading up in the background or what, I have no idea. And another lap complete. Nine laps remaining. Another thing I love about this championship as well is that the races are fairly short. They're more like sprint races than full-on proper touring car races, which I really enjoy. Fast and furious sprint races, which are always good. There you go, just warming up the tires a little bit, swerving left to right. Yeah, I do slow down a bit too much for that corner, but I'm just trying to take it steady when uh, cornering because this car does like to spin, as we've all come to know and love. And after race number two, it will be at the halfway point in the series. 16 races in this championship, and we're already coming up to the eighth race. You can see some of the other AI drivers on the other part of the circuit, carrying on with their laps. Ooh. Oh, we can actually go through here then full speed. Nice. And slow it right down for the last corner. It's a lot tighter. This track on this game looks a hell of a lot tighter than it does on GT Legends. Really, really claustrophobic. And it looks like we pulled out an absolutely colossal lead on second place of Jens Edmund. There we go, slowly getting the hang of it. And then you got this sweeper. Going to the right. 
Oh, got the ass end out. Come on. Stupid car. I mean, if anyone has actually played this in the past when it first came out, did they have this problem as well? Or is it just a known glitch on newer systems? I have no idea. Well, whatever lead we did have, we've lost quite a bit of it now. Thanks to going off. But that is no cause for concern because there's two lovely sweep co sweeping corners that we can carry so much more speed through. Uh, 3.8 seconds and 4.3 seconds, I think, from the two Volvos behind. Seven laps remaining as well. So this race is going fairly quickly. Don't even have to brake, just let off the throttle, let the car coast around the corner. Scrubs off enough speed on its own. I don't make the same mistake this time. There we go, perfect. Can we actually make a lap without sliding the ass end out? That'll be nice. Do a proper clean lap. Do we see any AI yet? They're on the right hand side there. On the back straight. Still no sliding. Carry the speed, feather the throttle, last corner, and we completed a single lap without sliding the car or spinning the car, and kept it on the black stuff, which is good. And also increased our lead again. So, I mean, the difficulty on this game is on the highest it will go, and it feels really, really easy. I think once you get dialed into how the car feels and you're able to, you know, push it into the corners, this game is rather trivial, to be fair. And I do check every single time because, again, the, the championships don't save. So I do check to make sure that the... Uh, the actual options save and yes the difficulty is on the highest it will go so yeah it's just a case of me getting used to the game again back around the sweeper Ah, uh, we failed. Oh, we slid the car. That's it. Race over. Oh, well. Wonder if we'll be able to lap anyone during this race. Lapped quite a few during the race in the previous circuit. I can get my braking zones a little bit better. I think it's because the way I'm driving, I've gotten, like I said, used to how the car is handling, because this is, I'm recording this directly after rounds five and six, so I'm sort of more dialed in to how the car feels, but it's still a little bit, you know, 
scary when you go around the corner and the ass end flies around on you and it's sort of like, oh! Oh, look at that, 124.48. Oh, look at that. 124.48. That's Jeff Gordon and Jimmy Johnson's numbers. How awesome is that? So we've got the Hendrick teammates as our time. Which is wonderful. Four laps to go. And it looks like we're going to scratch up another victory. So if this keeps on through the rest of the season, we could actually win the championship by a country mile. No cars in sight, though, to be lapped at the moment. complete. What's our lap time going to be? Uh, it's not in the 24s this time. Keep it together. There we go. I don't know, the way the car feels when it starts sliding is a bit like Ridge Racer, you know, when you tap the brake or the accelerator and you get the car into a drift. That's how it feels like on this. So you can definitely tell there was a lot of arcade influence into this game because it isn't exactly a sim it's a full-on arcade racer but it's still relatively enjoyable not as good as the second one as I've uh, mentioned many many times and I will try and get the second one to work once this series is wrapped up So at the moment, like I usually do, if I'm in the lead, I just go for the fastest lap time as well. Just treat it as a time trial. See if we can get the fastest lap time throughout the race session. Drifting it as we go. Yeah, 123.88. Nice. No... Well, we are miles ahead anyway, so that is not too much of an issue. So, two laps to go. And we're going to rack up three wins on the trot. And be on course to wrap up the Swedish Touring Car Championship. Well, not yet. We're only heading up to halfway through the season, so anything can happen. Oh, no. A bit too wide. sweeper. I do love these sweeping corners. Like the ones that were on the previous circuit. And final lap. And it looks like we could actually come up to lap someone as well. Topping out at 248 kilometers an hour. There's a nice little gaggle of cars up ahead, but I don't think we're going to be able to catch him in time. 
I think uh, I would need another lap at least. And unfortunately, Netten Lindgren is lagging at the back. Uh, we actually might be able to... Uh, we might be able to lap her. Maybe a few others. Yeah, squeeze up the inside, lap. Net and Lingren. And another one for good measure as well. And bin it into the barriers. Oh well. Oh well, another victory for us. Hooray. Awesome, another 20 points to add to our collection. So here's the race results then. We get another max score of 20 points on the board. Jens Edmund and Jan Nilsson at the top three rounding out the podium. Then we've got Carl Rosenblad, Thomas Engstrom, Thomas G, Hubert Berg, Stefan Lindberg, Thomas Johansson and Pegan Anderson. The final of the point scorers in 10th. Netan Lindgren unfortunately finished in 16th. So that concludes today's action then and I will see you all tomorrow as we head towards the halfway point of the championship and we start round 8 of the series. So thanks for watching, take care, stay safe and I'll see you all tomorrow. Bye for now.